What's going on guys, Brandon Kaisef here with Kaisef Trading. In this video, we're gonna learn how to pull some secret data into TradingView. It's actually just Quantable data, so it's not a secret, but it's still a really cool thing to do, so let's get started. What's going on guys, Brandon Kaisef here with Kaisef Trading. This is gonna be a quicker video. We're gonna access uh, some secret data. It's not really that secret, but you wouldn't really be able to access it unless you knew how to code it in PineScript. So it's Quandle data, and I guess TradingView and Quandle are compatible. So we can pull Quandle data from this website here, data.nasdaq.com. If you go ahead and uh, go to this web address and go to search for data, and we put Quandle in here, we'll get a list of data that we can send over to TradingView and then plot however we would like it to. So I'm actually going to remove Quandle here from the search bar, and I'm just going to click free on the filters. Uh, Quandle data is some of the only free data that's provided. I believe all their data is free. There's tons of data on here uh, that is premium data, like Zach's data. It's not compatible with TradingView, so we cannot use it. That is something that we would have to purchase access to and then use in Python. But with TradingView, for free, we can use Quandle. So that's pretty cool. So all this Quandle data, uh, Federal Reserve Economic Data, Yale Department of Economics, Commodity Futures Trading Commission reports, all this data is for free and can be sent over to TradingView. There is even, and let's go ahead and find it here, there's S&P 500 ratios. We'll go ahead and click on this real quick. So we can get the P-E ratio for the S&P, the dividend yield, P-E ratio by month year, sales ratio, price to sales, earnings yield. So uh, traditional fundamental metrics that we would use to analyze a particular company can be accessed here by Quandle on data.nasdaq.com and sent over to TradingView. So for instance, let's say we wanted to take the S&P 500 ratio by month. We can see that this data updates on a monthly basis. All we have to do here is come to this bottom right corner and we can see that we have a, a little, we'll call it a little string message here. So we have a message here. And it says multiple slash SP500 PE ratio month. All I have to do if I want to access this data on TradingView is come down here to this bottom right corner and copy this little message that we have here. So control C or however you would copy command C. We can go back to TradingView and I have a brand new script open. Now to request Quandle data, right? First we'll create an identifier. It can be anything. So I'll say X. X equals request dot Quandle left parentheses. So if I highlight over the syntax, request Quandle data for a symbol. That is the description of this built-in function. Now, it can be a little tricky at first figuring out how to get all this to work, but this video will just show you how to do it very simply, very easily, and you can pull any Quandle data from that data.nasdaq.com website very easily. So it wants a ticker. We're not going to use a ticker here. We're just pulling the S&P 500 PE ratio for the month. So literally all we're going to do is uh, pass this as a string message. So we're going to put quotation marks and then go ahead and paste what we just copied. Boom, that's it. So given the nature of this data, we're, it does not change by the symbol. So if we go to Bitcoin or Microsoft or Apple, uh, we're still requesting the exact same data set, which is the PE ratio of the S&P 500. So we actually don't need to change any of these other arguments if we don't want to. So ticker gaps index and ignore invalid symbol are not necessary right now. Let's go back to our Quandle data here and we can see that there is only one column of data. So this is going to be index number zero, one column of data. And I'll explain more comprehensively uh, in another data set, data table, tabular data, whatever you'd like to call it, when we need to start using the index argument for request.quandle right here. So I have the string message in here, right? I copied it from the bottom right of that data table. And now all I would have to do is plot X, just like how we would plot close price or any sort of data series. And boom, now we have that data on our chart. So we can see it changes by the month. Right, and it should go back for as long as this data is provided for free. Okay, yeah, so it goes way, way back uh, into the early 2000s, maybe even further back. So let's make sure it's correct. We have 2593 on the chart. That's the PE ratio for the S&P 500. And we can see that the most recently reported value is 2593. 
And yeah, so that was super easy. Now, let's go ahead. We're going to do a little more of a difficult uh, data request here. That way, once we know how to do that, we can pretty much uh, pull any of this data with ease, right? No trying to figure anything out. It'll be very simple. So let's go to FINRA data. Let's find FINRA data if they have it here. FINRA, here, published by Quandl. So that means if we see that, we know we can pull it to TradingView. So this has short interest for pretty much anything on the MYSE and the NASDAQ. And it has uh, ETFs and things of that nature as well. It's not going to have OTCs like Freddie Mac, but it'll have pretty much almost anything that you're looking for on the stock market, uh, short data for it. So let's go ahead and pull Microsoft. And we can see here that we have FINRA provided short data for Microsoft from the NASDAQ and from the NYSE. Now, again, all we would do to take this data is copy this message here in the bottom right. We can come back here to trading view and then we'll create uh, another variable here and we'll just call this short and short equals request.quandl left parentheses. And all I would have to do is paste that message in here and now we have it. Uh, we're gonna request that data. However, we're gonna have to do a few more things here. So let's go ahead and understand these arguments. Let's go ahead and read about them. So request.quandl and we can see that they're using a similar message to what we've been pasting in here for the example. And it wants a ticker. Note that the name of the time series in Quandl data feed should be divided by a forward slash. So that's okay. We found uh, what we needed. We know what to put here for ticker for now. Uh, we're going to get a little more advanced with this. In the next video, we're going to do something really cool with short volume data. Uh, we're going to build this huge, awesome indicator. But back to this script. We have gaps, and by default, bar merge gaps off is the default value. That's typically okay in most circumstances. We will use the gaps argument, and we'll just put gaps equal bar merge dot gaps underscore off. We don't have to do that, but this will help us familiarize ourselves with that argument. And of course, there's a more thorough explanation here. Now, index. Okay, this is very important. A quantile time series column index. So when we go back to this Quandl data, the FINRA short data, we have three columns here. So the first column provided is column zero, which is short volume. The second column provided is short exempt volume. This is column number one. And then we have total volume. And this is column number two. So we're just going to pull short data from the NASDAQ for Microsoft for now. We already copied this message. And we have index zero, one, and two. So we're going to pull the short volume data from this uh, tabular data set that we have right here. So short volume is what we need. So we're going to put index. We can see here that it is a argument. It's the next argument, sequential argument for this built-in function. So we're going to say index equals zero. Okay, and that's going to give us the short volume data that we just saw on the NASDAQ website. And then lastly, we have ignore invalid symbol. That's not going to be necessary for this data that we're uh, requesting because no matter what stock we go to, it's going to plot Microsoft short volume data. Still, we're going to familiarize ourselves with it right now. That way in the next video, when we build this really cool uh, short volume script, uh, we'll be able to progress with it quickly because it's going to be about 200 lines of code. So it's uh, gonna take a while to, for us to go through all of it. So we're gonna say ignore invalid Symbol equals true, and the reason we do this is because, as it says here, determines the behavior of the function if the specified symbol is not found. If false, the script will halt and return a runtime error. If true, we'll just get NA, but the script will still execute. Again, because we are requesting a fixed data series, this is just going to be Microsoft, each, and every time this is not an issue, but when we build our script in the next video, if we select an asset that FINRA does not provide short volume for, such as Bitcoin or something of that nature, right? The script will uh, generate a runtime error, which is fine. If we put ignore invalid symbol equals true, the script will still execute, but the short volume measurement that we're looking for, is just going to run NA. It's going to say NA. So it doesn't matter either way which one we use. I guess it's just a matter of preference in this case. For now, we're going to do ignore invalid symbol equals true. So let's go ahead and we're going to plot short. So I plot short and boom, this gives us the short volume data for Microsoft for FINRA slash NASDAQ. 
we would still need to use Finra slash NYSE and combine the two. That would give us the total short volume on those exchanges. And then, of course, if we did not want to plot the data as a line, we've gone over a lot of plot uh, variables and functions and arguments throughout uh, the videos on this channel. So we could plot short here, and of course we could change this to, we could say color equals, and we'll say short is greater than short brackets one, if so, color dot green, if false, color dot red. We can do style, and we can do plot dot style underscore columns. And this will be fine for now. There's tons of arguments there, so you can get real creative with how the data is plotted. And now we can see here that we have short volume, and maybe we should uh, do short is less than short one instead. Let's go ahead and do that. Right, so boom, now we can see when there is an increase in short volume session over session or a decrease in short volume session over session. So we can get real creative with how we plot this data that will make for easier deciphering and interpretation and building trading systems around this data. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.